Praise the Lord. Let's look at chapter 17 a little more in depth. 12th verse is very interesting. The 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. That means to say that these are 10 horns. Horns is like, you know, trying to come up to be a power, to be a, uh, to be a world, uh, you know, power like that. Today, nations are trying to vie for uh, supremacy with each other. Some lesser known nations are going to become popular. Some power equations are going to change because it's written in the Bible that the 10 horns that you see are the 10 kings who have not received a kingdom and they will try to establish their kingdom with their philosophies and practices and ideologies, whatever it is. But they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. All of these are working for the Antichrist again. So these are of one mind. So in short, we can make it out that the ten, seven mountains or the seven kings or the seven kingdoms plus the ten horns are all the nations of the world combined. Some are already in established power and some are going to be in power. But all of these are working for, these are of one mind and they will give their power and authority to the beast. They will make war with the lamb. Who is lamb? Lamb is Jesus. And the lamb will overcome them. Right? And for he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings and those of whom who are called chosen and faithful. Now, there can be many kings and there can be many uh, princes on this earth. And many title shapes and all these things can be honorably given. But our Lord and Savior, but our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is referred as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. That's a great title. That's a great honor. That's a great privilege. And he will overcome them. It's written in four, verse 14. For he is the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and those with him who are called chosen and faithful. That's why we call as a bride of Christ, the chosen and faithful. In a marriage context, a husband and wife, they are faithful to each other. So like if Christ is the head or the like a husband, the church is the bride or the wife. faithful. And so spiritually also when you relate it at that time, those who are not faithful become the prostitute or the harlot. And that's what we are meditating today on. That this is about that those kinds of uh, people who have allegiance to other things other than God. And so by, and so biblically, uh, you know, it has been said that this is about the harlot. <clears throat> and then he said to me, the angel said to John the Baptist, the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are peoples, multitudes, nations, tongues. I've shown you a few pictures and you can see that the woman is sitting on many waters. It signifies peoples, multitude, nations. And so it is nothing but kingdoms, nations. And the ten horns that you saw on the beach, these will hate the harlot, make her desolate and naked, eat her flesh and burn her with fire. In other words, God is using all these objects of wrath also to achieve his purposes. Now the beast, the harlot is away from the bride of Christ. And so God uses these elements also. The unruly world, uh, the world, the kingdoms that have false religions, false ideologies, practices, right? To, again, make the harlot feel neglected and burn her with a fire of judgment of God. And so you will have wars, destruction, violence, and all these things also taking place, centered around these. In the spiritual context, it is what uh, this is, and then in the physical context on the earthly realm, these kinds of events unfold. And so for God has put it into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind and to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. So some kingdoms are there that are vying for recognition and uh, they are very fierce. They are 
practicing false religion, ideologies, these things must happen because God has allowed it. And then these will be given to the kingdom of the beast. The smaller rulers will be recognized by the bigger established forces. And the woman you saw, the last verse we are at, is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. The woman, in a way, you can say, shows a great amount of mother influence or the influence that it bears on the nations of the world. Today, many nations are following uh, religious ideologies and there are divisions and discrepancies and discriminations based on ideologies. And uh, religion as such should not be a vote factor. But today, many religions are also there uh, that are following, uh, you know, religion as their uh, vote thing. And so this simply means to say that uh, the woman had a great influence on the nations of the earth, even though she was not following uh, the godly way of doing things. She was not having allegiance and faithfulness to God. So to sum it up, Revelation 17 is all about the scarlet woman and the scarlet beast. Both are scarlet. And scarlet in a way, a purple or red in a way signifies, uh, you know, gory, violence, blood, lust, deception, lawlessness, sin, all these things combined together. As well as that is the work of Antichrist as well. Right? In no way do you read that in Antichrist there is peace and justice and fairness and all these things. It's all these kinds of things that are there. Right? Disturbing things and violence and all these things. So essentially it is just a prototype of the events to happen in this world. And some of those events are already taking place in this world. So we have to be praying and watchful more than ever before. So I hope you have now got an understanding on Revelations chapter 17, and you will also meditate more on this. I'll see you in the next one soon again. Thanks for watching and I hope you're blessed.